We're going to move on to our next presentation. I'd, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Tim Baker from E2E Soccer. Uh, this is a really, really uh, exciting time for the coaching department in that Tim's product that we're going to be using um, will certainly, I feel, will change the way we do things from an administration standpoint. Uh, so I'll ask Tim to come in today to give us an overview of the program. And uh, he'll be available for questions um, during, during and after the presentation. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang around. And um, hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me. I always enjoy speaking to customers, and that's why I consider you. We haven't met most of you before. I am a referee, by the way, so I might have met some of you, particularly when I like this. Explain the glasses. Sorry, I, I need this. Uh. But if you see me do this in front of you, you know what it means, right? So. Um, uh, <laughs> so Mark. <laughs> Mark's invited me down today uh, to give you a demonstration of our brand new product called Coach Center, which you're going to be using uh, over the next 12 months for sure. And uh, we're going to do a simple demo on that later on. First of all, before I get started, maybe a show of hands of people uh, in the audience. Has anybody heard of E2E Saga before? Okay. I guess we're doing a good job marketing-wise. Okay. Uh, what I've got is a, a few slides just to introduce the company so you know where we're coming from, uh, what we can provide for you. We're not uh, someone who's just arrived. We've been around for a while. And we've also worked with the Ontario Soccer Association for a while. So we're founded in 2003. And uh, we're based in, in Ottawa. So we're an Ontario company. And our goal is to provide IT solutions for the soccer community. Now, up until now, that's mainly been clubs, leagues, uh, and referees. This is the first time we've actually started to work with coaches. So as I mentioned, I'm a referee. I'm not a coach. I have a lot of respect for you people, but I don't understand exactly what you're doing. And certainly Mark and Kathleen have been educating me a little bit more about how you do your job. What I'm here today as well is to listen to you. And if you've got suggestions so that we can make the product better for you, then please do so. Okay. Um, our products, what we try and do with our products, and make sure all my staff understand that, is we try and automate the operations of the organization. So for example, if you're a soccer league, one of the biggest problems you've got is generating the schedule at the start of the season. Okay, Maybe as coaches, you just take it for granted. It just appears. right? But somebody has to do a fair bit of work to get that schedule generated. And we provide the software. Um, we, we provide software to our customers to allow them to generate them fairly, fairly quickly. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, we used to do um, the regional league in eastern region. Uh, ERSL used to have over 600 teams. Our software was able to generate a schedule for 600 teams in about 15 minutes. Okay, so um, that's what we try and do. What it used to take, uh, you know, several days, we were actually able to do it in minutes. So that's the kind of uh, goal we try and strive towards within the corporation. We have about 250 customers across North America. Most of them are in Canada, but we do have a few in the States. And we've been working with provincial associations other than Ontario. We've worked with Nova Scotia Soccer Association, um, Saskatchewan Soccer Association, BC Soccer, and also the Alberta Soccer Association. So we've got a fair bit of experience now working with the provincial organizations as well. Uh, we basically have, up until today, three products. Uh, we all call them center because we want to make sure the user is at the center of the operations. Whether you're a referee or a coach or a player, we want to give you the visibility so that you look like you're in the center of, of the operations. We don't want to give one screen for everybody and say, well, ignore that part because that doesn't apply to you. <coughs> Just focus on this piece. No, we're going to make it so it looks, we understand your role, and we're going to try and make you the center of uh, attention. So we have Club Center, which is a club management product for clubs, League Center for leagues, and Ref Center um, for referees. And they all work together on a central database. So for example, when a league has a schedule uh, for the coaches and the players, the referee assigner is working on exactly the same schedule. Uh, in the olden days, before technology came about, you're never sure whether the referee schedule had got that latest change. With this system, you do, right? So if the kickoff got moved from 6.30 to 8.30, everybody knows about it automatically. 
So very quickly, here's our club product. This was actually a screenshot from Waterloo minus Saga. And we look after things like online registration, scheduling, house, line, house league management. This is a screenshot of the Ontario Soccer League. Uh, we got uh, most of the leagues, uh, I wouldn't say most of them, but a lot of the leagues in Ontario now use us for league management. And the Ontario Soccer League, uh, many of you will be familiar with them, David G, his organization, they use us, have been for several years. And the referee assignment system called Ref Center, which uh, we've been working with the Ontario Soccer Association uh, since 2006. And this is the schedule here, and you can see it's the same schedule the leagues use, but now it's been displayed so it's appropriate for a referee assigner. So that's why we've got green check marks, and there'll be red X's sometimes, and empty boxes, and so forth. And that allows the referee scheduler to make sure all the games are covered. And there's automation as well to make sure we can actually make it very easy for him or her to do his job and uh, works quite well. So the Ontario Soccer Association have used Ref Centre and the reason I want to put this slide up is because Coach Centre is very similar in one area to what we've already done with Ref Centre. Um, so since 2006, all referee registration is now done on Ref Centre. They no longer go through the AIM system. Uh, it's been pulled off now and it's separate, it's on the ref center. So if there's any referees in the room, I know there's one, um, then you will now referee uh, on ref center. Um, we also do um, game assignments, as I mentioned. Assessments, uh, referees do get um, checked out. We do get, uh, I know you guys check us out every game, but we actually do get assessors coming and sitting in the stands and giving us feedback, and that's all <coughs> scheduled and record it on the system so that Kathleen can uh, work with the committee to make sure that certain people get promoted and certain people maybe come down the other way. We also manage fitness tests. And one thing we added um, last year very successfully to uh, all four provincial associations was course management. So now all new referees do their entry level and their mini referee training through the ref center system. And we do have a referee instructor at the back of the room, and you used it last year. Would you mind uh, just maybe giving a little bit of your experience as a referee instructor? I think essentially it just cuts out all the paperwork. Um, like we were saying, in terms of availability, I say when I'm available, if Kathleen sends you a course, I say yes, I accept, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have a list. So you have your 30 participants are right there. Click, 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 email goes out to everybody, because sometimes like we know, the clubs don't get that information out. I need running shoes, I need everybody to be ready. Is there any problems beforehand? And you're already, it's quick ways to get in contact with all your participants. This one's gonna be a little bit easier because it's more of a, you attend, you're certified kind of thing, whereas that one's more of a pass fail in terms of exams and marks. However, it's just a lot easier for you to communicate with your class before and after, and just allowing that ease, even in terms of your availability. Like I know it'd probably help out um, Kathleen tremendously that she doesn't have 70s people who she has to worry about who's free April 4th and 5th. Right away she looks, if you've checked it off because you have a wedding that weekend you're not able to attend, she knows she can move on. So it's just an ease through with the OSA as well as with your participants within the course, which I thought was really, it was great. Great, thanks very much. So what we did was uh, when we presented this cost management system to all the provincial associations, the uh, light bulb went off and went, you know what, we got the same problem with coaching. In fact, it's bigger. We have more people going through coaching courses than we do through referee courses. So what can you do for us E2E Saga to help us do that? So over the course of the summer, um, we prepared um, a requirements document and we came up with a new product called Coach Center. And if you go onto the internet, you'll be able to find it at Coach Center .ca. And I want you to remember that because um, we're going to need you to create an account later this week. Kathleen will be in touch with you uh, via email. She has all your email addresses and she will notify you when to go and create an account. Okay? It will probably be tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. And we're going to need that done within a week, right? Okay, so it, uh, we'll show you how to create an account in the demo. It won't take too long. Um, and uh, once you set up, you'll be able to start making, uh, as the gentleman said, putting your availability for teaching. Yes, I can. 
Uh, right now, when it says integration, it's very loosely tied. What it is is going to be able to generate. Uh, I understand that for each course, for coaching, you have to present a spreadsheet last year to the provincial association, and then that would be sent off to the NCCP. Am I correct, Mark? Yes. Okay. You will no longer need to do that sheet. Okay. NCCP requiring, and then I'll let you go ahead, requiring that they have to generate. What's going to happen is we're, we're not going to, uh, there's going to be a soft integration where this information will be provided automatically through an Excel spreadsheet that Kathleen will be able to send off to the NCCP. We are hoping to actually do a bit better than that. The beneficiary, I think, will actually be the NCCP because they don't have to do any more data entry, right? But we've only just recently started that uh, communication. So at the moment, the only integration is going to be generate a spreadsheet automatically so that you no longer have to do it. Um, and then that will be sent off to, by Kathleen to the NCCP organization. Okay. In the past, I believe Estelle was always struggling to fill in those spreadsheets, right, Mark? Yep. Missing date of births, mm -hmm. missing numbers, right? the system won't have that problem anymore because it won't be able to generate that sheet without that. Everybody's date of birth will be in the database. They'll have to put in their NCCP number if they have one and their OSA number. You don't have to worry about that. It's all done for you with the system. Okay. Is that uh, okay for now? I can't promise you any more on the integration with the NCCP because that's up to them. Okay. Let's talk about the different users, okay? Obviously, we've got coaches. And I'm not talking about you people. I'm talking about mom or dad who are just becoming a coach for the very first time. Their six-year-old son has signed up, and the local soccer club's looking for volunteers to become coaches. That's how you probably all started, right? They've got to get onto the system because that's how they're going to do their course management. We've also got facilitators, and I know you do your facilitation in suit and tie, um, but unfortunately we couldn't, I couldn't find a decent icon. Uh, but you certainly probably have a pencil to make some notes as you're going. Um, but you have requirements as well in the system. And then of course we've got the club or the district. Um, they put on the courses, and they need to make sure everybody pays for those courses, if, uh, if that's the case. And then of course we've got the OSA, uh, managing the system, and here you can see Kathleen and, and Mark uh, at the top, and they've got to make sure everything's going on. So what we've got to do is consider the needs of all these stakeholders in the product, and that's what we're going to demonstrate today. Um, unfortunately, to be able to do that, I'm going to have to keep logging in and out to, to simulate these. The club or the district, for example, will put up a course. They want to do an active start course the first week of March. They'll put the requirements into the database. You as a facilitator will also create an account and you'll indicate when you're available, which days of the month, which areas of the province you prepare to go. Maybe you live in, Miss live in Mississauga, but are you prepare to go to Timmins, for example, to do an active start course. Maybe you are, I don't know, right? Um, you put that information into the database. Once Kathleen has that information, she can then match her up and decide if she's going to approve that course in Timmins. If she's got a uh, facilitator available, and if everything's set up correctly by the local soccer club, she will approve that course, and she will allocate a facilitator to it. Once that's done, the local coaches or the potential coaches who need to do that active <coughs> start, they'll go onto the system and they'll register for that course, and they'll end up paying the club or the district appropriately. Um, that's not done on the system because of course each club has a different fee structure. Some it's free, some will charge, and those who charge may not be the same amount. Um, some will want checks, some will want cash, some will want to go into their online pay system. It's all separate. We don't touch that part. The clubs and the districts take care of that themselves, but they can track it on the database so that the treasurer can log in and actually see where all the money is supposed to come from to pay for the, the invoice when Kathleen sends the club the invoice. At the end of the course, the facilitator will go back into the system and for a community course, we'll just check off 
if John Smith attended that course? Yes or no? If he says yes, John Smith, the coach, has sent an email asking him to log back into the system to complete a survey because we're trying to get some feedback on how well you're doing and also how well the club is doing in hosting the facility and the staff will use that to help them do their job. And once they've done that, they'll be able to download their certificate. Once that certificate is generated, if John Brown decides to leave Timmins Saga Club and move down to Mississauga because there's more Saga down there, the local club, North Mississauga, will be able to log on to the system and make sure that John Brown, sorry, did I say John Brown? Whoever he is, John Brown actually does have his active start like he said he does. Okay, so it becomes a certification management system. Okay, that's the fundamental part of the product. It's going to make, I think, your life a lot easier. And before I move on with the demonstration, is there any questions on this kind of setup here? So you'd be tracking people's qualifications as they go forward, or would you be back to the qualifications? That's an excellent question, right? Certainly going forward, we will be tracking them. It makes it very, very easy to do that now. As, uh, as the parents are able to do that, they'll be able to get, uh, maybe they did active start this year, Next year they do fundamentals and they'll get a nice little coaching resume going forward. What about the certifications you've done in the past? We certainly want with this product, although it's not there today, and we have to work with the staff on seeing how to manage this, um, we have to probably start with phase one is getting in last year's 2012 courses. Okay? I think you started out long-term player development last year, am I correct? In this yeah. province? Okay. This year, 2012. So those people who've already taken the existing courses, fundamentals, active start, and so forth, we probably want to get those in for 2012. Whether we go beyond that for the community courses and, and, and other courses that happen before long-term player development, I don't know yet. We certainly want to speak with, with Mark to see if that's a requirement to get their information in. Um, ultimately, we'd like to give this tool to you so that you can, a lot of you, it's, it's your job, I know that, and you, it, obviously your certification is very important, so we want to get that information in there. Um, the long-term goal is certainly to get as much of that certification into the database as possible. Okay, does that answer your question? Well, yes, I mean, the locker tracks it as well. Yep. So you need to be able to lock. Right, so we may, that's why there may be a, a cut off at long-term player development, I don't know yet, that's something I have to work out with the staff. Certainly BC Soccer have told us they don't want to go past 2012. They're going to cut it off at the uh, long-term play development, but they do want to get in this year's data. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, let's go on to the demonstration. Now, this is not my computer, so it's, uh, I'm not, if I'm a little fiddly with the mouse and the, um, the keyboard, I apologize. This is what CoachCenter.ca looks like. And I should add that you can spell Coach Center either way. If you want to spell it the American way, T-E-R, you can. It will work exactly the same way. Um, we own both those domains. So CoachCenter.ca, uh, and you'll come to this public page. And the first thing we want you to do is go in and uh, register. So this is what Kathleen is going to tell you to do in a couple of days. We want to hold off for a couple of days because there's a couple of uh, last minute changes we've just been asked to put in. So uh, we're not quite ready. We were hoping to send you home tonight to do that. Um, but on Friday we got, uh, and yesterday we got a couple of new requests. So we're going to wait until Monday to make those. And Kathleen will let you know when to create your accounts. But it's quite straightforward. Um, you just click on the register button. And you'll get a drop-down box coming in here. Uh, right now, the only customer who's, who's using it right now is the Ontario Soccer Association. As I said, we're, we're probably going to go live reasonably quickly with BC Soccer as well. And we're hoping to take this to other, not just soccer people, but also other sports as well. <coughs> um, we'll probably start in 2013 just with soccer, but ultimately we want to go into other sports as well um, with this product. So the first thing you have to do is select the customer, in this case the Ontario Soccer Association. And 
you then get a registration form. I'm not going to fill this in um, just for time, but it's a pretty standard one. First name, last name, gender, date of birth, address, and so forth. Um, the, we're missing a couple of things on here. We're going to track your OSA number and your NCCP number, um, which is why we're not asking you to do it. We'll make those changes on Monday. And then at the bottom of the screen, <coughs> you'll see, uh, I forget what these are called now, but you've probably seen them register on f uh, forms before. Um, we just want you to enter that and um, hit the submit. The reason we put that in is so that the spammers can't come along and start creating accounts, okay? Um, it's a, a common way of creating a registration form. You will be asked to enter your email address and select your own personal password, okay? You can choose wherever you want. There's no, uh, there's no password rules. It must be so many characters and so forth. Obviously, the stronger, um, put some numbers and letters in, it will make it stronger, but that's entirely up to you, okay? Uh, I don't recommend you use the word password. That's the easiest password to hack, okay? Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five is another one, okay? Try and keep away from the obvious ones because you are entering some personal information in there, and we do try and protect it, but obviously you have a responsibility as well to protect that yourself, okay? I'm not going to fill that in because it's going to take some time, um, but once you've done that, what I'm going to do is log into an account that's already been set up, Okay, I'm now logged in, and I'm now logged in. Um, ignore this button for the time being, the facilitator, because you won't see that straight away. The first time you log in, you will have a coach account, because you're also coaches as well as facilitators, okay? Once you've created an account, what's going to happen is at the end of uh, the day, Kathleen will log on to the database using her password as the, pro as the province, and she will add in uh, your name so you can get access to the facilitator software as well, okay? Some of you are more than just an LF. I believe some of you are MLFs, am I correct? And evaluators, is that correct? Okay, so you will get, um, you will get those privileges as well going forward. But everybody I understand is an LF, so you'll get those privileges. That's when you get this facilitator button up here, okay? The So if we look in the facilitator button, once Kathleen's added you, um, you're going to have this button up here. We're going to add a help page for you um, this week as well, so you can go back in if you're a little confused or you need some help. But here's the calendar. We, we talked about updating the calendar, first of all. When are you available to be a facilitator? Now, I understand sometimes courses are also run during the week, so don't just enter the weekends. But we've got a calendar showing Monday through Sunday. And if you're not available on a Wednesday, for example, all you have to do is check the boxes and it comes off and then submit it. I should add that when this opens up, it's empty. It assumes you are not available. So you will have to go in and check them off. I'll show you how you can do that for a later month. Let's pick February. You can see it's an empty month. You can check them off one at a time if you wish, or you can select all if you're available for the whole month. Okay? And then when you're finished, just hit the update button to save that information. It's very important you save the information. If you don't hit the update button, the information is not saved. You can come back into this anytime you wish. So let's just say, uh, um, I know some of you, it's probably a part-time position. For you as a coach, you've got another job. Let's just say you have to go out west. Your boss has asked you to go to Vancouver for a week. 
you can just go back in, log back in, and take yourself off for that week. Okay. It will also be color coded when you get given some code, some uh, courses. So once you've been given a course, the date will go yellow, showing that it's an offer. You will get 48 day, sorry, 48 hours to accept that offer, right, Kathleen? Okay, Kathleen wanted to stress that to me, right? Um, now, when you get sent an offer, and I'll explain what happens uh, when that happens, you have to act upon it within 48 hours. That's going to be the policy of the staff, okay? Now, if we were to offer this gentleman here, sorry, what's your name? Stan. Stan. Let's just say we offered Stan a course. What would happen is he would be sent an email from the coach center system saying, Dear Stan, you've been offered a course. Please log in to coach center to accept or decline that course. Okay? Once that email gets sent, as I say, Kathleen's going to give you 48 hours Stan to go in and accept you. It may be a little longer if it's on the weekend or something, but you're certainly not going to let it sit for a week, right? Okay? She's very important that uh, she wants that course covered, so stand. If you don't want it, just go in and say no. But if you do want it, go in and accept it. Don't just assume because you got the email, it's yours. That's not going to happen. We're going to show you what happens to do that later on. The other thing we need to know, other than availability, is where are you located and also where are you prepared to teach. This is important. Those of you who do the uh, pre-B, I understand, are expected to travel pretty much anywhere within the province. But for the community courses, um, I think the, the goal is to try and keep expenses down. You'll be, you'll be teaching mainly in the area in which you live, right? There are some exceptions. Obviously, as I said, if the course is up in Timmins, sometimes there's nobody up there available that weekend. Maybe we have to send somebody from Mr. Saga to do that. But what you have to do on this page is called the district page is you check off which district is your home district. In this case, uh, we had, because uh, that's where I live, Eastern Ontario. Um, so you can see this box is now grayed out. But I've checked off that I'm prepared to go to Durham, Casa, and Sosa, Southeast, that's the Kingston, Belleville area, right? So it's reasonably close to where I live. Should Kathleen need me to go to Kingston, I've indicated I'm prepared to go. Chances are she's going to try and get somebody local, but if she's if she's in a squeeze, I'm prepared to go. Um, I'm not prepared to go to Niagara or North York or Peel Halton. And we need you to do the same to set up the system that way. Okay? The, I understand that, as I said, they're going to try and keep them, the expenses down by using local people wherever possible for community courses. Okay? So it's a very important screen that you fill this one in. Okay. The offers page, we can, uh, there's no offers at the moment. I'll uh, show you what happens later on with this one. Um, we'll give uh, this individual an offer, um, but what will happen is it will be up here, and there'll be a, a green check and a red X. I'm sorry, I thought it was set up. It's not. Uh, we'll do that. Um, but once the schedule is there, it will actually appear on the hit. You'll get it listed like this. Um, this is course number three. The host is Ottawa South United. It's an active start. You can see the date and the times and which city it's in as well. Well, that's not enough information. I need to know a little bit more on that. So you can click on the preview. And then we've got the information here. Forget this line. That's coming out. Um, but we've got the details here exactly where it is. In this case, Barhaven High School. The host is John Brown. You can get in touch with him. And all this information will disappear for you. As a facilitator, that's really the information for the students. What you may find useful, though, if you don't know the location, is the Google map for the location of the course. All this information has been entered by the host, in this case, Ottawa South United. Before Kathleen can approve the course, she reviews all this to make sure it's set up the way it's supposed to be. Okay. So for example, if they ask for an active start on Wednesday for a course on Saturday, you're probably going to say no, right? Okay. So there's certain things that Kathleen and Mark will have to check before it gets approved. Um, you won't see it until it has been approved and offered to you, okay? But the information will be there for you.
At the end of the course, you'll have a, uh, we set this up so you can see it in advance of the course just for the sake of the demonstration today. Uh, but you'll get a big list like this with the, um, the names. They'll actually, it's actually going to change from a checkbox to two radio buttons to actually, so you're going to have to actually check that Robin Banks attended or did not attend. Okay, you're actually going to do one or the other. In this case, Robin Banks is the only student. He gets in a lot of our demos, Robin Banks. Um, so you will have a radio button that will uh, change. That was one of the feedbacks we got from, from one of the customers. So this will be a, a radio button, did attend, did not attend, and you will check it. And then you will hit the submit button. That's all you need to do at the end of the course. You don't have to fill in any more paperwork and send it off to the office, okay? Because all the information is already in the database when Robin Banks registered his own account, okay? Once you've done that, Robin will be sent uh, an email, and he will actually be able to log back in using the My Certification tool. He gets the same one. And uh, we actually did a demonstration here. Um, here you can see this particular individual, Dave Jones, um, did an active start course in the city of Stittsville, and he can actually view the certificate. This certificate, which you got here, is just for the sake of the demonstration today. It is not the actual certificate that will be going out um, when the courses happen. Is there any before Christmas? No, after Christmas, okay? We're still waiting for uh, the, a couple of the images from the CSA to be able to get those. But here's an example of what we did. We actually took, for the sake of this demo, the referee certificate, okay? And we just kept it the same and just put the NCCP logo in the corner. It's not the one you're familiar with. Um, I, I understand the one you have has got the signature from the CSA head coach, am I correct? And a few of the other logos. So it's going to look exactly like that, and you'll be able to, um, the, the individual will be able to get access to that. Sir? Question, will we still have to hand out the physical certificates at the end of the course? No, no this is direct and empty. There's feedback. Once you get the feedback, you can just keep going. Okay. Stan? So I'm doing my attendance. Mm -hmm. I get a call, I get interrupted. Uh, yes, you gotta hit the submit button. Uh, on the radio buttons, no. When it gets changed to a radio button, no. As long as, let's just say you got a list of 30 people, you do 10, Mark phones you up, wants to know something. The, the 10 you'd already done are already in the database. The other, the other 20 you'll have to go back and, and do it again. on the database even though I haven't updated it? The 10 you did, Yes, they'll be saved, okay? As soon as you hit the radio button, it's saved. The 20 you didn't get to before the phone call information will still be uh, unset. You'll have to go in and, and, and set those, okay? So you me to say you're not confused. No. Easy right. take it, unplug the phone when you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I take it? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, if, if you guys are entering all that information, can you guys vet the facility, like going back to our <coughs> earlier discussion on the facilities, if you know that it's a primary school, then why not cut it off at the source, because it will come <coughs> as a stronger message from you guys that, you know what, this facility isn't appropriate, then, you know, oh, you're, this learning facilitator is just being a pain, asking me to change the facility. Good point, I haven't thought about that, good point. But if you, if you guys are entering it, and you're vetting it up front, like, you know what, your maximum registrations at Claire Lee in Scarborough, because the this field is great, but the room can only hold 20 people, could be 20 people. So they know that when you receive it from there, as opposed to having it come from me, you know what, I can't take 30 people in there because it's too hot, it's too crowded, or whatever the case may be. And same thing with public school. I'll actually, uh, we'll, we'll do that part of the demonstration later, but when the host adds a course, he can actually put down the number of students he's prepared to take. So hopefully if he understands that that room can only take 20, that's what he'll set it up with. There are limits according to the OSA of 15 minimum, 30 max, okay? And so we're only giving him those choices. But if he knows, that club knows they can only take 20, they're allowed to actually put that into the database when they submit the host, uh, host form, okay? Who can change the parameters? Uh, for the... Uh, well, they can request it uh, 
it will default, I'll show you that in a moment, they'll default to 30, but they can go down to 20 if they wish, the, the club can. Um, if, for example, it's 31, it's up in Timmins. I keep picking on Timmins, but it's uh, any course, I guess, could have it. And the, the club has requested, do you mind if we have just one more? We don't want to run another course. They will be able to go back to Kathleen and Mark, and they will decide if they want to go beyond 30, okay? They will decide that, not the host, okay? Uh, they may say no, that's their decision, but we will give them a tool to allow them to increase it to 31 if they want to, okay? If you already have a profile treated in, in let's say, the center, um, now as a coach slash facilitator, that a next profile being created, is there a way to merge both and then have the tabs at the top? No. Access no, it's a, it's a separate product and a separate database, so these are, even though they look fairly similar, they are different and you will have to have two accounts. You can use the same email address and password, no problem. So if you've got a ref center account and you're, you're John Brown and my password is uh, Man United, you, we get a lot of those too, um, then uh, you can repeat that on Coach Center if you want, no problem, okay, not an issue. But you will actually have to have two, two <coughs> physical accounts, it's two separate products, okay. Okay, let's, uh, the graduation tool, there is a, gra there's nothing there right now. When we come online with the pre-B and the, help me out here, B national, B province, provincial B, B national, as I said, I'm a referee, I'm sorry. Um, there is additional. <laughs> there is additional work to be done other than just attend. Am I am I correct? Okay. That's why we need the graduation step for those courses. We will not be releasing the uh, pre B and the B provincial, B national until um, just before Christmas because we're still gathering the requirements. But I understand some of them will require some preparation work that the coaches have to do. Some of them will re require them to write an actual exam on the laws of the game and so forth. There will be additional tools that you may be involved in as a facilitator where you may have to do some marking or, or vetting, et cetera. And at some point you will decide whether that person has passed his pre-B or his B provincial or his B national, okay? That's what the graduation tool is. We're just putting it there for now. For the community course where they have to attend and that's it, you don't need to worry about graduation, okay? Now, what about contacts? is a little hard to see, but at the top here you've got the contacts of the staff members. We put Kathleen at the top because uh, the assumption is that should be your first point of contact for administration issues. Am I correct? Okay. So you've got Kathleen's name, phone number, and email address, and underneath Mark Marshall. Um, and we'll add if there's more people come on board that they need to um, put on the system, we'll make those available to you as well. So you've always got uh, easy access to that information. Now, what about the course itself? Let's go down here to the drop-down box and select it. And here's the information you need. John Brown, he's the host contact, so let's just say you're not quite sure whether that primary school is big enough for you or not, right? Maybe you need to phone up. I remember last year reading some documentation that 10 days before the course, you're supposed to, as a facilitator, make contact with the host club and start chatting about the numbers and so forth. You won't need to do that anymore because you'll be able to see it, of course. You'll be able to see the number of students on the course um, in advance, so you'll know whether that course is going to happen or not. But you may still want to give John a ring just to introduce yourself and let him know exactly um, what you expect of him as a host. If you've got courses with uh, MLFs and evaluators, you will also be able to see their contact information, which may be important if you have to work together or maybe carpool try and keep the expenses down and so forth. So that information will become available, available to you on this uh, tool here called Contacts. You won't see everybody's, only the people you're going to be working with on your course. So Stan, if you're an LF and you want to find out who the MLF is on your course, you'll be able to see it, but the other MLFs in the other part of the province, you won't, okay? Question at the back. Are you going to be able to get participant contact? Um, we can do that if you wish. They're certainly in there. The, the host can certainly see them. 
Okay, and if is it important for facilitators to get in touch with the students? Do you think? Okay. So you, are you suggesting that that information is, is important for you as a facilitator? Because we can certainly add it if you do. It, it just depends on the process. Okay. Like if, if it should be directed through the host, yeah. then you, you can do, do that. that you want to put responsibility back on the host to get mm -hmm. information so you guys don't have to do it. Yeah. So the host would be filling out the yeah. information such as mm -hmm. each region, for example. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry? I, I don't see why we would contact the host if, I'm just saying if you need to, for whatever reason, the information is there. Whatever. OK. So maybe you're not quite sure where it is. It's a bit confusing. You got lost last time. Or maybe you've heard last time they didn't bring the projector or the whatever else they're supposed to bring. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's a list of things a host is supposed to provide. I know in referee, and they are. Uh, maybe you just want to introduce yourself beforehand. Question in the back? I don't know. Not necessarily do I need to see their phone number and email. It would be good if you can click all the participants and kind of send an email from a system saying this because sometimes hosts don't inform them. Bring the, bring lunch, bring water, bring running shoes, cleats, and or whatever. Okay. So I don't need to see their phone number or address or anything, but we hopefully button or something where I can send a mass email on Thursday or Wednesday before the course saying this is what you need to do. Why should we have to do that? Can you address that? I, I don't, and Igor, I understand where you're coming from it, but what will happen is certain hosts will dump that back onto us all the time. Yeah. We want the host to take care of it. We're, we're facilitating, we're not hosting it, so we want to put responsibility on that with people. The hosts certainly have that, that tool. The exact tool you asked for, yeah. I'm going to demonstrate that to you later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as Mark said, Mark specifically said, I don't want it for the facilitators because he wants the host to do it. Um, we could add it for you, but uh, we'll take direction from Mark on this, OK? OK. The last tool which I was stressed to mention to you is expenses, OK? Um, this is just a text page explaining how to send the expenses into the association. I'm sure you want to get paid after you've done your course, right? And so here's the instructions. Um, so this may change. Uh, Kathleen's got an action to check this out. Um, but it's just an example for the demonstration. It's saying, please submit your claim within seven days, OK? Um, and send it via post to this address or via email here if there's no receipts required. And underneath, there's going to be a process for the different type of course. So in this example, this is just a learning facilitator for a community course. It's a fairly straightforward um, expense claim. You're entitled to claim $40 per hour to a maximum of $340 and mileage of 35 cents per kilometer. And that's it. When it comes to um, maybe that course out of Timmins, I'm pretty certain you will pay for the hotel, right? I mean, there will be some exceptions. So there will be additional ones underneath here. You will select the appropriate one for the course you just did. And it was stressed on me last week. Make sure you stress that you've got to get this in within seven days. You can click here for the appropriate expense form, OK? And that tool is very important to the association. OK, um, I'll show you as well. Uh, the next thing I want to show you in the demonstration is the news section. And you've got the ability to read news. It automatically will come up from the province. You don't get any choice. If Kathleen or Mark want to post something on the bulletin board, you and all the other coaches, if it's, it's set for the coaches, will be able to see it. If it's set just for facilitators, only you will see it. Okay? Um, but you can, if you wish, go into your profile over here, and you can get a news feed. So. In this example, we've got all the districts listed down here. And if you are in, uh, like Julian, he's in Peel Halden, OK? Uh, he may want to check off, I want to see all the news from the Peel Halden district. Chances are he's probably going to issue them anyway, but because um, he's the TD there. But if somebody else has put it in, 
um, he can also receive those. And the same with the clubs. Maybe he wants to check off a particular club, and he'll get that news feed should the club be prepared to post that news. Okay. What sort of thing? How would that be used? Well, the club may want to post it up that they're looking for a new technical director or something, right? They've got an announcement, um, and if you're interested in applying for it, right? Uh, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. We're going to give them the ability to do it. Sorry? Okay, good. All right. Um, example. So, and again, the clubs will be able to use this to communicate with their coaches. So they may have some. Uh, news, um, if you're a member of, in this case, the uh, Almond Soccer Club, they may instruct all their coaches to check off the news feed and they'll use that to communicate with them that there's a preseason meeting uh, Wednesday night in the clubhouse at 7 o'clock. All coaches are requested to attend. Okay? That's maybe what they might want to use it. Uh, hmm? Particularly the district uh, is advertising saying they're having uh, coaches courses on such a That's right. And the information that's right. And, uh, we do want to make this into a seminar system as well. I understand you coaches go on a lot of seminars. Am I correct? People come in. Uh, you know, CSA may come in, or maybe there's a seminar on concussions, things like that. I've seen that in Eastern Ontario for sure, because I get emails from the district on it. We want to get the system to do that eventually. It's not there yet. But that's another example of an announcement that they may want to post. OK? Does that answer your question, sir? OK, good. Again. This is, if, if, if a lot of people are using it, it's going to get very full, that news. So be selective of what you want to see. Okay? You will see specific news just that Mark and Kathleen have issued for yourselves. Okay? And the, the regular coaches won't see that. It's only for facilitators, and they may post that. For example, if there's a change to the expense policy, they may post that. OK, while I'm here, save me logging in and out, let me show you how, um, as I said, if you, if you ignore this button here, then this is a regular coach. Remember that parent who's just signed up? How does he register for a course? He can actually go on here to this tab. And there's a search engine here showing him uh, which course to have. There's going to be a, t a tool tip here um, on the which course to help you be able to do that. For example, uh, I'm a brand new parent. Uh, my daughter's playing soccer this year. I'm not quite sure. I'm probably, my wife will probably beat me up to be a coach. Um, I actually do know which course I'm supposed to take because I'm working with, with you. Uh, but if I was brand new and I had no experience, which one would I take? So we're going to give a little bit of a tool tip here. Um, they'll just click on that. We're still waiting for the text to confirm that. Um, but it will appear just like that. Um, but if you just want to do a search, let's do a search on here. Um, anywhere within the province will make it easy for a Soccer for Life course. And there's a search engine coming up. And here's one here with the, the club. is called the NCISL, which is actually my club. It's an adult club. And it's coming up in Canada. There's 30 places available. And if I want to register for it, I just go over here and click on the register button. And here's the details that have been entered by that club. Looks good. That's the one I want to do. So I go next. And now I get the legal waiver. Right? You can't do anything without signing a waiver these days, right? So this is the waiver that the Ontario Soccer Association have provided. And it's got all your rules and regulations of um, waivers. And it won't allow you to proceed until you check off that I've read all the terms. Okay? So they will check these off. And now I can register. And now I've been registered. I've gone on to this course. I still have to be approved by the club. Um, ignore this. It says approved. That's uh, the wrong text. We, we know about that problem. That'll be fixed next week. Um, the club, the NCSL, has now been notified that uh, this individual, David Jones, has just registered for that. So they now got their hand out waiting for their cash, right? And only when they've received the cash will they actually approve Dave Jones. Okay. This person is actually registered for two courses now, Active Start and Soccer for Life. And I understand that's perfectly legal, isn't it? Okay. There's no reason why they couldn't be able to do that. Okay. Question? Could you add a function 
they recommend, if you know where the person is from, you know there's level of certification, it's just a database query to search the appropriate program in their area, their address, and then tag the organization. Uh, well, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got a box here that says hosts. Okay, so we can actually do a search. Um, it's not so much on area, but if they know what club or what district they're in, they can certainly search on that, okay? Um, so for example, if I search on um, Ottawa South United, we can do a search on that. And yeah, it hasn't got any, I'll pick another course. Yes, that's you're requiring the user to know that information, but if the system is smart and you write a proper query, you should know to search for that information. Um, yeah, we could do it on city as well. That's a good suggestion. It makes sense if it's Mississauga or, or Ottawa, but sometimes people enter diff, you know, spellings wrong and the database won't know it. Um, most parents, I think, will know which club they're looking for. I certainly, as a parent, know which club I'm going to be coaching for. Um, so that might help. But um, I'll take your advice, and uh, I'll take your advice, and we'll certainly take a look at that. No, they just sign into the course. It's because some courses so can register, actually. When I do my initial registration, I enter my email address, set up, set up my account. Do they tie themselves to a club at that point? Not at that point, no. Not at that point. Okay. Not at that point. Uh, they're just creating an account with Code Sender so they can register on a particular course. Okay. Now that club may be restrictive. Um, the club is, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in just a second, the club can actually set it up as a private course. My, uh, my local club, West Carlton Soccer Club, they, they don't want anybody outside West Carlton because they're a small rural club. And they've only got so many places, they don't want people from Ottawa driving over to fill up the club so that their local parents um, can't fill it up. So they're going to just have a local one, it's a private one, and they'll circulate the codes <coughs> to those parents so that anybody else who wants to register can't, okay? They're entitled to do that on the system if they wish, okay? But if it's an open course and the NCSL is just looking for 30 bodies to fill, maybe they've only got 15 coaches of their own and they want other people to come in, it'll be an open course and anybody can register for it and then maybe coach in a different club. Does that answer your question? Okay. Can they first, if they only need 15 coaches, can, they, can the club first uh, put information from their own coach, then they open it for everybody? Uh, not, not at this time, but I mean that's maybe a good suggestion. We can certainly look at that. Right now maybe they could start it off as a private course and then maybe flip it when it's open, when it's full. They can certainly do that, but it's not an automatic system. Um, but they would be able to change it down the road to a, to a public course when they've maybe filled up their 15 spots. I guess they could do that. Okay. Maybe I should log in at this point and show you how the clubs work. Would that be a good point? And then I think we'll wrap up the demo. Um, Question of training. <laughs> if, if, uh, Where is it? If, if a person's going to sign up for a course, sometimes they pay, sometimes the, the clubs pay. Do they have to do it by mail? Do they do it online? That's entirely up to the club who's hosting it. When we're in BC Soccer, everybody pays the BC Soccer Association. No questions asked. You want to go on the course, BC Soccer send the, the fee is whatever it is. And if you want to take that course, you go online and, uh, you, and you pay online with your credit card or you send them a check. In Ontario, it's different. Each club has <coughs> their own fee structure, right? And I'm going to show you how that's set up because they have to enter it. Some clubs may say it's free, okay? It's a private course and it's free. You're all our, course, all our coaches, we're not going to charge you. Other clubs may say, well, I don't know what, what is active, I don't know, I'll, I'll just use a figure, $50 for the course to do an active start, and they may say, that's the fee. Okay? Now, another club may say, well, we've just spent $300 on a gymnasium. So it's not $50 for us, for you, it's $50 plus $10 for the gymnasium. Others may say, we're providing lunch. Okay? They've got that ability to set their own fee. And they will also decide how it gets paid. They may say send a check. They may say go online to our club website and pay online, etc. It's entirely up to them. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, there's many times people bring their check to the actual course. Um, As a facilitator, is that your job? No. 
No. Okay. So I think Mark was saying we want to get the host to do whatever they want, right? So is it fair to say that that's not really your business anymore as a facilitator, and it's up to the club to work out that arrangement? That won't happen with this. It won't happen. It won't happen this year, right, Kathleen? We had that experience with referees. Um, it, 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 if they don't have their 15 registered, the course will be cancelled, right, Mark? Okay, by a certain date, and there will be a cutoff point. Maybe it's. Uh, we haven't discussed that yet. You're going to be given a tool where you say, we're going to cut off registrations X days before. Let's call it seven days, okay? You cannot register seven days before this course. With this system, we can do that, okay? Um, and then, so if the course is next week, you've got today as the next weekend. Today's probably the last day you can register for it. Thursday, Mark, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we can, so we can we can set that... As I said, that date is determined by Kathleen and Mark, okay? They will, and it could be different for different courses. The community courses could be, as you said, two days before. Probably pre-B is a bit more, right? Okay? So they may say it's two weeks for pre-B, okay? And we can certainly set that up. And we should stop the people turning up uh, with this process. We certainly were quite successful with that with, um, with the uh, referees, okay? Does that help you? Okay, good. Okay, I'm now logged in as um, I'm now logged in as a club, and this is how I'm going to wrap up the presentation because I'm I'm wary of the time here. Um, the menu item that I have as a club, I've got a menu item called course management. I'm going to show you how we would add a course. So if any of you, I'm sure some of you are TDs or in, involved with clubs, maybe you're working with the district and you can spread the word when you go home. You can tell these people. I think, Bobby, you are, you, yeah. yeah, so you can probably explain this. Um, they will also have some training and a video to help them. Um, but what they do is they will go on here and select that course. And here's the options that they have. It will have, uh, we, right now we've just got the four communities. We'll make this one uh, soccer <coughs> for life. The number of days is one. It's actually going to be uh, coded. You'll see that this week. Uh, there's certain rules that we've got. It won't allow you to, for example, run a soccer for life over four days, for example. We don't want to do that, right, Mark? OK, so there will be some rules put in place to stop that from happening. Um, remember I said you can make it a private or a public course? This is how you would do it. If you enter as private, you would enter the private code in here. And let's just say it's um, soccer is the code. It's probably not a good one. Uh, only those people who know the code soccer will be able to register for that code. How they get that code out to their, their coaches is entirely up to the host. Okay? We did this on Ref Center. It worked very well. Um, so we'll try that again. Okay, it's going to be a public course. We go next. Um, the first thing we do is choose the date. So let's go into December. We'll say uh, December 15th. It's asking us for the time. We'll do 9 o'clock until 1 o'clock, because I think it's, is it, how many hours is Saga for Life? Eight hours? 16. 16, okay, well, we've got to do two days, okay. Let's go back. We'll change it to two days. Okay, there's the two days. We'll change this one to um, December 15th. The day two is December 16th. And we'll stick with the 9 to 5 for both of them. Remember we talked about the number of students? They're the options they have, 15 to 30. So if the gymnasium is only big enough for 20, they would set her at this point to 20. We'll leave her at 30. Uh, location.
Now, this section here is where they enter the, the information on the cost. So remember, this gentleman here, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Bill. Bill. Bill was asking about the different costs, okay? This bill is where they would enter the information. Okay, so if your club uh, says it's free, you can put that there. But if, let's just say it's free to your club, but anybody else who wants to come in has to pay 50 bucks. Um, that sounds fair, right? Right? After all, the, the club's paying it. You will actually put in there 50 bucks, but put underneath a note that says it's actually free to members of our own club. Okay? And they'll manage that internally. Okay? So let's just say it to $50. And the next instruction says, how do you pay that? Let's just say this, and send check payable to uh, the start of a saga at this address. Okay, I'm not going to type in the address. And then finally, additional notes. Somebody said, bring, lu bring lunch, right? Or bring run and choose, whatever, right? No hat. Sorry? No hat. No hat. Okay. There you go. No hat. Now, facilitator requested, right? Um, this is particularly important with the different payment structures. There's uh, type 1 and type 2 for the active, right? So it's very important. <coughs> However, a club may still want Bobby to be the, the selected choice because they've worked with him before, or Stan, right? They've got a good relationship from last year with him. They want him again. They can put that in. It doesn't mean you're going to get Stan, right? He may be busy doing something else. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. But it's their, it's their request, and Kathleen will look at that. And if she can accommodate it, I don't know, with referees, what percentage will you help to do that? A good chunk, 50% maybe, right? <coughs> okay, so that's the club um, request. In this case, we'll leave her empty. Um, the next page is where they enter the location for the map. The map in this case, because this club is set up for Eastern Ontario, will default to downtown Ottawa. If it's a club in Peel Halton, it will be Mississauga. Uh, Toronto, I think, is downtown Toronto. And so we, we try and make it easy for you to scroll to the right location. All you have to do is just move the map, and uh, where you find the location, just click it like that, and you're done. Okay? You've got the satellite if you want, if you're not quite sure. And, you know, it's just kind of useful if you want to get it exactly right. And, you know, it's in somebody's back garden right now. <laughs> but you get the idea, I think, right? If you want to be absolutely certain, you can get it done. It's in, it's, in, it's in Stan's house. There we go. All right. So. Is that not based on address too? Or like, is that either or? It's just click with the map. There's no address entered. Again, because what we, we used to do with map, and we found that it didn't always match up with Google. Um, <coughs> so we found it's just as easy actually doing it this way. People get used to it. Okay, there it is. That's what we've entered. Is it correct? Yes or no, I've got a choice now as a club to check that. In this case, it is fine. So I say confirm. At that point, email goes off to Kathleen. My starter have requested a course. Okay? That's her prompt to go in and take a look and decide whether she is going to approve it or not. Now, based on her performance in, I'm not sure performance is the right word, but her uh, history with ref center with the referee courses, you approved maybe 95%, right? Okay, some, and some just got pushed back because they didn't have enough hours or what have you, right? We're gonna try and fix that by boxing you in so there's some rules this time. But that's now done. You can see at the top, it's now been added. And the course can actually see it here. Uh, here's a list of all the courses. The green tick, this is all um, made up data as we're working on it. The green check marks, refer to It must it must be for Stan he's interrupted there we are.
All right, so here's all the courses they've asked for in this particular year, and these have all been approved. That's why they're green. They've all been approved by the province, and students have already started registering for them. You can actually see who's registered uh, number one. What a mode. One of you, one of you, gentleman at the back of the class that was asking for this one. Um, the class list, I want to be able to get in touch with certain people. Um, let's see what's on here. Here's some of these. They may, yeah, no students on that one. Let's pick one with some students. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Here's some students on this course. There's currently two, Chris Irvin, Dave Jones. We can see their age. That's important. Nobody will be able to register who's under 16, I should add. Okay. The software will stop 15-year-old youths registering because the rules of the Ontario Soccer Association do not permit coaches who are under 16 years of age. The way we do that is we take it um, right now, if this is wrong, please tell me, but it's done on the date of the course. Okay, not any particular date in the year. Is that how you would want it? Okay, so if the course is on uh, March 1st and your birthday, you're 16 on March 2nd, you won't be able to take that, you won't be able to uh, register for that course. Okay, but if your birthday is on the 28th of February, you will. Okay? Is there any, like, will we know if it's females or males attending the course? Male or female? Yeah. Some, some names to be... Uh, is that important to you? Because we can certainly add it. Well, after what happened today... <laughs> 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 well, if there is any girls or any boys, I can use different wording, right? Okay, <laughs> we can put an M or an F there. Uh, certainly we can do that for you. No? Yep. Good suggestion. That's why I'm here today, to get some good suggestions. So thank you for that. We'll add an M or an F here, because we will know where it is. OK? The, um, the uh, green check mark means that they're approved. The club has said they've received their money. I'll show you how to do that down here with this tool. But this person here has not been approved yet. OK? So he may have registered and filled in, but until he comes up and pays his money, I'm not going to approve him. OK? Now, for those people uh, who are in the club, remember uh, Bill was saying, how about some people in the course? It's free for my club we used, but anybody else who comes along pays the 50 bucks. I will go down here and use the approved tool, and I'll show you that in just a minute. A uh, gentleman in the back was asking, I want us, the clubs to send emails. OK, we talked about it. This is how they would do it. Let's just say, we want to contact David Jones and tell him he hasn't paid. We just check his box. We can type the email in here. Scroll to the bottom and hit the submit button, and that email will go out. Dave, just a reminder, you haven't paid your fee yet. We can't allow you to attend the course if you haven't paid in advance. Regards, club treasurer, whoever, right? If you want to send it to the whole class, just a reminder, there's no, rest, there's no lunch nearby, and there's no restaurants nearby, so please bring a packed lunch with you. And it's going to be sunny this weekend, and we're going to be outside. Don't forget your hat and your sunscreen, OK? <laughs> Submit, and that can go out to everybody. The whole idea is we want to ma uh, make the host do their job, and you concentrate on teaching. I believe that's the message we want, OK? And so if we give you those tools, you'll tend to tread on each other's toes, OK? We want you to focus, just like we did with the referees, um, it's, but the referees are slightly different because they had to do some pre-work before the course. But certainly in the coach, case of the coaches for the community courses, let the clubs do their job and you can focus on being <coughs> a good facilitator. Okay? However, if you feel this is needed, speak with Mark. We can certainly make this tool available um, to you as a facilitator if you need it. So you definitely won't have more than 30 names over there, right? That's right. So now, sometimes, sometimes they want to, uh, like they, they want to, uh, one guy he wants to register, 
but they, they would ask me if, I, if they're allowed to register 31. So no more. Uh, we have a, a news page, but just uh, so what about a resources page? We mentioned before there are resources coming out. I know the website's going to be redone and whatnot, but in the interim for new coaches coming on, it might be easier to have a page of resources with links directed to information about FTP, about the triad, about you know, certain mm -hmm. information. Is it possible to add something? Uh, yeah, that's the intention. Uh, the reason it's not there today is because we haven't received it yet. As soon as we receive that information, the, um, the way it's going to be presented is uh, what I've been requested to do is you only get access to the coach material after you've attended the course, right? Um, but there may be some other resources that is always available there as well. Um, it is a depository of information. We want all coaches to do this. Um, those people who took a course last year but don't intend to take one this year, I, I don't know what the percentages are, but I would imagine there's probably only 30% of active coaches in Ontario are taking a course each year. The rest are surviving on what they've done in previous years. We still want them to create an account to get access to that information to help them. Uh, related to that, are there tools for the club to follow up? Look, I had these 20 coaches who did the active start last year. Can I send an email to those 20 coaches this year to register in fundamentals? Absolutely. You can, uh, oh, well, no, well, they won't be, they're not in the mailing list, but they can certainly ask them to do so. We don't have access to their emails. They have to create, um, they will have to create an account, like I showed you on the first page, okay? Anybody can create an account. So the club probably has their own mailing list through Outlook or what have you for their coaches, and they'll say, from now on, coaches, we need you all, even if you're not taking a course, create an account here. Create an account because this is going to become a perennial system. It's not an annual system. The difference between the referee system is the referee system with an annual system. You take the course, you're done, right? That's it. You move on to somewhere else to become a referee. With coaches, it's not. You're going to keep coming back year after year, do more courses. Some will, some won't. I'm sure you people are not going to do community courses, right? Um, some of you may not do any courses this year, but it's still a valuable place for you to get information and keep updated. And so that's why we want all coaches who are active in Ontario to make sure they have an account. No, I know, but I think <coughs> you're missing, I, I, from what I'm not hearing, I, I think you're missing the link between the club and the coach. So like if, I, if I'm not tying a coach to an organization, then like I want to proactively get to the coaches that I know who've done the active starts for my club. Yeah, I can have another system than that to do that. Yes. But if it's already here, so I know who, who did it in 2012, I know these 12 coaches did my active start, so then I have, as a club, I have that list. Yes, I understand exactly. I, 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 we need to communicate with those people first of all and tell them to create an account. I can't, I can't do anything until they, they have, create an account. Don't they have to have an account to register for a course to begin with? One so last year. If they did one last year. Okay, sorry. Forget about it. Okay, so assuming this year. Yes. If I, so as a coach, I've registered with the thing this year. Yes. So then, as part of that registration, is there a link between the coach and the coach? Yes, there'll be a, it, it's something like, it's going to be something like, um, Facebook. If you've got a Facebook account, you can become friends. Okay. Somebody wants, Stan wants to be a friend, right? Yeah. So you can, so, if, so Stan may go up and say, I want to be a member of the, of, uh, the, hat, uh, the hat club, okay? But I can uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you can on Facebook, but at the same time, the club can request you if they want to become a member. So it's going to be, if, you, if you've got a Facebook account, it's going to be something very similar to that, okay? It's going to be a loose relationship like that. So if you leave, take you off, okay? Does that answer your question? Okay. They will also, the clubs will also be able to get the information to the different facilitators. So if they want to, remember you could see their contact information, they'll be able to see yours as well. So if they want to be proactive and phone you up beforehand, just to let you know, by the way, there's roadworks coming into the school, go around the other way, 
they may want to do that, get in touch with you. Okay, they'll be able to communicate with you. They'll be able to see that information. Again, we did that on the ref center system. Very popular. Got the communication going very well between club and instructors in this case, in your case with the facilitators. The approve, um, we haven't got anybody to approve here. Um, what would happen is the students would be listed there and let's just say I turn up at a clubhouse with my check for $50, the club can now go on and approve you and what happens is you mark down as um, uh, paid by check if that's where it is or by cash or by credit card, point of sale, whatever the club wants to track, maybe free, right? We talked about that. Maybe some people get a free one. The president's son gets a free course, right? That's how it works, right? Uh, but everybody else pays 50 bucks. Okay, so they've got that tool to be able to do that. They'll be able to export that, give a spreadsheet to the club treasurer saying, by the way, the OSA is going to bill us 1500 bucks, but we've collected 1800 You've got a $300 profit from this course, treasurer. Okay? Um, the move tool is important because what tends to happen is Guess what, I've registered for the active sport and I forgot my wife's got me going to see my mother-in-law that weekend, right? Can I go and do the course the following week instead? Okay, as long as it's <coughs> eligible to do it, the club will be able to move those individuals to do that, okay? They won't be able to move it to another club because of the financial relationship. Bill's club charged 50 bucks, Stan's club, it's free, right? We can't take a student from your club and put them over to Bill. That's not right. Okay? One of the problems, uh, uh, I, I also wear the hat of okay. running clinics. We had last year, was, there were some clinics canceled against Thursday, and all these people who were registered are scrambling to get a different clinic in the last two days. So could they not transfer it over? Uh, they, because of the financial transaction, no. Right? They can't move to another club. They can move to another one within the club, yeah. but because of the relationship, there may be a totally different relationship with the club down the road. Right? They would have to move down. Um, they can register for it, uh, but they would have to go through the process again. Okay? The final tool, just to let you know, is the, uh, which I'll demonstrate here, is the export tool. Uh, I won't do that, but it, what it does is, is it generates an Excel file with all your students, all your coaches' information on it. Email addresses, phones, even their password for those who forget, right? You can go in, again, very useful tool when you're a club doing your job, as Mark said, let the clubs do their job, right? If they're having trouble with the system, they can actually log in and say, well, I'm logged in as you right now and I'm able to get in, so you're typing in something wrong, right? Okay, a very useful tool. Okay. I want to be respectful of your time. Is there any questions? There is. I could spend another half an hour, but I won't because I know you want to go home. Is there any questions or comments that you'd like to pass on to me? Just uh, actually maybe one other feature on there is uh, do we want to ask if people are going to be able to participate in the field sessions? Because you could, or I, they, should, they should be. Uh, part, of, part of answering the course, they should be, they should be part of the field. Uh, other questions? This gentleman first, and then we'll go there, okay? So just to be a little more politically, politically correct, we should probably address um, the disability issues. Because we might have someone who wants to take the course that's disabled. That okay. I can see us being a little more um, politically correct, instead of not being able to participate. Okay, so we're talking about access to the building and all these different okay. types of things. Can I take that under advisement with Mark? I think that's a good suggestion. So, for people with disabilities, can we take that next week in one of our meetings? Yeah. Okay, is that okay? Well, you'll get a lot of letters, trust me. Sure. Perfect. We'll take that under, I'd rather than try and work out a solution now. I think it's a very good suggestion. I'd like to take that and discuss it with Mark. I did promise this gentleman first, and then I'll come back to you. I might have missed it earlier. Um, is there a printable attendance sheet that we can use? Yes, there will be. You'll be able to dump out the attendance sheet into uh, Excel or, or whatever you need and take, take that and check it. Yes, absolutely. Because we don't want you, you could do it on the phone or your iPad while you're there, but we want you to take it home and, and 
That's why that little cartoon I had on the slide out of pencil, right? You're going to check them off in there. But we will give you that. Okay. At, at some point in time, the NCCP will require all coaches to have continuing education credits. Will you be setting something like that up in the coach database? Um, maybe. We're, we're, we're currently on a one-star product right now. I think what you're asking for is a three- or four-star product. So down the road, maybe. I think we could certainly, you know, I'm trying to think of a hotel analogy here, right? Um, we haven't really gone that far down the road, but certainly we want to get talking to the NCCP to help give you and the coaches the tools that you need to do your job. Okay. Any other questions before I hand over? Oh. It will actually say this is a private course or this is a public course. They'll be able to see that. Okay, so uh, yeah, they're all in the list. And if they click on private, it'll they'll get a screen coming up saying, before you go any further, you've got to enter the code. If you don't have it, contact the club, but you may not be entitled to attend. Okay. One more question. Sorry, this might actually, Mark, this might be more for you. The common question that we get is, hey, you know, do you show, I want to take a coaching course. Where do I go find it? Am I directing the here, or is it still going to be on the OSA site now? It's all coming on here now. Now, the other thing we will do, and Kathleen raised this as a good point, we want to make a public search engine, right? So we're definitely going to do that, but they will have to create an account to register, okay? Which makes sense, right? Any, any database you, to register, you're going to have to create an account. What we don't want to try and do is get the people registering two or three different accounts, because then that means more work for the staff to merge these down the road. That's, that's always a problem with self-registration systems is people do it more than once and then you have to merge these accounts. Yeah, but the registration is not predicated on them being affiliated with the club necessarily. I can't hear you, sorry? It's not predicated on them being affiliated with the club already. No, no, it's a public site so they can go on and register. Okay. So what you guys are probably used to is when a cell is here, she would do like a chart on the website, which means you can sort by month. So now it'll just say you want to take a coaching course and you don't know which one to take, click here and there's that NCC but your point is well taken and we have addressed that and we will have a solution for them to help them find it there's nothing worse than not knowing where to go right <coughs> that's up to uh, the staff to decide that uh, when they're happy with it I guess the first thing we got to do is get all you people on once you're on and they're happy with the functionality, then we'll roll it out. And my opinion is it's not too far away, right? It's probably only a week or so, right? There's, there's a few things we've got to iron out. Uh, when I'm comfortable with it, I'll recommend to Mark and Kathleen, I think it's ready to go. My opinion is, and I've been through this many times with software, is it's pretty close, okay? There's still a few things we need to work out. I, I don't like releasing new software when it's a little buggy and not quite right. There's help files missing, things like that. Those things we need to put in place. My guess is probably within the next five to seven days we'll be ready to go public. But we hope to get you all on board before that. Okay? Okay, thank you everybody. I appreciate the time. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate the time coming down. Okay, so thanks, Mark. Moment. Yeah, and as, as I said earlier, if you've got any suggestions, Mark and Kathleen, um, if you do go to the E2E, soccer website you will actually get back to, to me or one of my staff but the pr correct method if you've got suggestions or concerns is to go through Kathy